Gigabyte G34 WQC Monitor 4K gaming monitors are just starting to find their footing in the PC gaming space and still require some pretty insane graphics horsepower to run at decent frame rates. That's why many gamers, including myself, find 1440p at 144Hz to be the sweet spot of monitor specs right now. Gigabyte, a relative newcomer to the display space, has hit this sweet spot beautifully, offering a high-refresh 34 ultra-wide curved gaming monitor at a rather affordable price. When it comes to basic specs, the G34 WQC checks the right boxes right off the bat, a sizable 34-inch screen size, 3440x1440 ultra-wide resolution, and smooth free sync capable 144Hz refresh rate, with HDR400 as a mediocre, but still welcome cherry on top. That's a pretty impressive spec sheet, but it becomes a lot more wow-worthy when you see the $449 price tag. That's similar to other affordable competitors like the Acer Nitro 15 340CK, and a lot less than higher-end 1440p ultra-ides like the LG 34G and 850B. It does come with some sacrifices, but depending on your usage, you may find them worth the savings. Hey, what is the aspect ratio of your gaming monitor? Is it 16x9 widescreen? Or 21x9 ultra-wide? Or 32x9 super ultra-wide? Or 4x3 Snyder Special? Write me down below. For example, Gigabyte's design is basic, but attractive, with no RGB lighting or flashy accents, just a mostly frameless bezel atop a flat, two-legged stand that keeps wobble to a minimum. And while that stand offers all-important height and tilt adjustments, you don't have the ability to swivel or pivot the display. This won't be a problem for most people looking at the monitor straight on, but it may not work for less conventional setups, not that you'd probably want to use it in less conventional setups anyway, given its slight 1500 or curve. The display is VESA compatible, so you could use it with a third-party arm if you wanted, but that cuts into the cost savings you're getting from this monitor. In addition, the I.O. is limited to two DisplayPort 1.4 and two HDMI 2.0 jacks, no USB pass-through at all. It does have some weak speakers and a headphone jack, if that's your thing, but again, it should serve most users well enough. The power supply is built in, so you don't have any power bricks cluttering up your workspace. And the on-screen settings are navigable with a joystick button on the rear of the monitor. I'd go so far as to call this a masterclass in effective cost cutting, hitting the important parts while skipping the less used bells and whistles, at least, in terms of design and build. That brings us to the panel itself, the most important component of a gaming monitor, where cost cutting is less than ideal. And while Gigabyte has gone with a VA panel instead of a better performing, and more expensive, IPS model, it actually performed quite well in our testing. I evaluated the G34WQC's capabilities using an X-Rite i1 Display Pro in conjunction with a copy of Coleman Ultimate, as well as some BI tests using test patterns from Lagom and Blur Busters. Brightness was decent on the G34 WQC, hitting a maximum of 338 nits in SDR. It also covered 100% of the sRGB color space and 87.3% of the DCI-P3 color space, which is solid for a monitor at this price, though color accuracy was less exciting. When measuring color accuracy, a delta E value describes how closely a color matches the target a monitor is trying to display, with a delta E value of 3 being good and under 1 being considered indistinguishable to the human eye. Out of the box, the G34WQC had an average delta E of 3.73 with a maximum of 8.37, that's not ideal, and there's a noticeable blue tint to the color temperature overall. And also that as a wide gamut monitor, typical sRGB content will show colors in a slightly boosted, more saturated manner, though this is common with all wide gamut monitors and do more to Windows color handling than flaws in the monitors themselves. There is an sRGB mode, but it was even worse in my tests, so it's not really worth using. Color accuracy isn't crucial unless you're doing content creation and kicking the blue down a few notches in the OSD produced what I'd call good enough color to most gamers who don't have a colorimeter to perform a full calibration. The deeper contrast ratio provided by the VA panel is worth that trade-off. Measuring at 3252,1 in my tests, much better for gaming in a dark room than more washed-out IPS panels. Black and white levels looked good, and gamma was okay, it kept an average of 2.2, .2, 
but dark shades were a bit overbrightened and light shades were a bit too dark. Response time is the other weakness of VA panels, which are slower than their TN and IPS competitors. Lagom's response time test uses an animated GIF to flip between two shades rapidly, if you see flickering in the transitions, that indicates a slow response time which will manifest as ghosting or smearing during motion in games. The G34 WQC did show flickering in the three darkest transitions, as well as some noticeable ghosting in Blur Buster's UFO test, even with overdrive at its highest setting. That said, it's far from the worst ghosting I've seen on a VA panel like this. Just note that the ideal overdrive setting may depend on the frame rate of the game you're playing, speed mode provides the best performance at 144Hz. For example, but at 60Hz produces more noticeable overshoot artifacts, so you may want to back down to balanced during slower paced games. Try both to see which you prefer. Finally, the FreeSync Premium implementation worked as advertised in my tests, and while the display isn't officially G-Sync certified, G-Sync worked just fine with my NVIDIA card in NVIDIA's G-Sync Pendulum demo. If you're coming from a 24 or 27 monitor with a typical 16 by 9 aspect ratio, gaming in ultra-wide will blow you away. I find it especially jaw-dropping in cinematic games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where the expansive views can really stretch their legs across your field of vision. That said, larger 16x9 monitors can do this as well, perhaps even a bit better. But a 34 Ultra Wide offers most of the gaming benefits of a 32 monitor while also being much better for desktop work with multiple windows. In other words, I'd call 32 monitors ideal for pure gaming, but Ultra Wide monitors are perfect for pulling double duty as gaming and productivity displays. The 1440p resolution and 144Hz refresh rate hit that perfect sweet spot too with the higher pixel density creating beautifully sharp images with smooth motion. FreeSync, as always, is a crucial ingredient to this, running games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider at high refresh rates is a lot harder than other titles, so FreeSync allows you to play slower-paced games with high details and fast-paced games like Overwatch at 144 frames per second, without having to manually change the refresh rate or deal with screen tearing. You may, however, have to change the overdrive setting between these two types of gaming, as I mentioned above. That's a small price to pay for a monitor this affordable though. And with overdrive set properly, motion is pretty good for a VA panel, not as good as the Samsung Odyssey G7, which also uses a VA panel, but again, I'd easily call it good enough. There is some minor smearing in dark scenes, but most gamers probably won't notice, if you're the kind of person who would, you probably know who you are. For what it's worth, I consider myself pickier than most gamers when it comes to motion, and I didn't find the G34 WQC's motion performance distracting in actual games. HDR performance is, as you'd expect, mediocre at best, with enough downsides that it's really only a minor improvement. While it does allow for a bit more pop to highlights, especially in games like Doom Eternal that allow fine-tuned HDR configuration, its low brightness and lack of local dimming means it's nowhere near what a high-end HDR 1000 monitor, or even a mid-range TV, could display. HDR also allows for more accurate colors in supported games, since wide gamut monitors oversaturate SDR content, but I found I needed to change bit depth to 10-bit in the NVIDIA control panel to avoid banding in HDR mode. Most annoyingly, the monitor seems to go back to the standard color setting every time it switches out of HDR mode rather than the custom setting I dialed in. The G34 WQC is an extremely well-built monitor for the price. It's a budget to low mid-range display, don't get me wrong, but it's one that cuts corners in all the right places. Gigabyte has done an incredible job of keeping costs low without killing important features or degrading performance, with the exception of not-so-great color accuracy. If you have more to spend, there are better monitors out there, but for $450, this is one of the best budget-friendly ultra-wides you can buy. So what do you think about Gigabyte G34 WQC, write me down below. Watch another helpful video on the screen, see you on the next video. Brought to you by Lenisil.